If you've already been to Japan before, I'm almost certain that you've already seen Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. There is so many more amazing places in Japan, and I'm about to let you in on the secrets as a sample to my brand new travel guide, Beyond the Tourist Trail, available now on my website. So let's get started. 10 unconventional, unique destinations in Japan, starting with number one, which is Beppu City in Oita Prefecture. Beppu is a very unique seaside town that is famous for onsens. They have a lot of volcanic activity happening under the ground, meaning that there are a lot of these big giant vents throughout the city. It's really picturesque, it's quite beautiful, and there's a lot of really cool and interesting things to see there. So I would highly recommend going to the Jigoku Hells tour. They're basically hot springs and onsens that you cannot bathe in, you'll probably die if you get into it. And they're all different colors and they're very impressive and very beautiful. The other things that you can do, there's a, like a sand bath, which is the sand that's heated up from the, the steam vents happening underneath the ground. And then they bury you in it. And it feels so nice. It's like a warm hug, like a big old weighted blanket. Uh, it, it's a really fun experience and you get to look out over the water, so I would highly recommend that. And also they do a lot of steamed food, like steamed vegetables and that kind of thing, which are steamed using, again, using these, uh, these vents coming out from under the ground. It's a very unique city and I've really enjoyed my time there. To get there, I would fly to Fukuoka Airport first and then catch the train down to Beppu Station. And then from there, all of the places that I just listed can be accessed using one of the buses that leaves pretty frequently from Beppu Station. Uh, I've got links in the description down below for more information. Generally, I just use Google Maps to plan out my trips. Even buses are quite accurate now as well. So yeah, go and do that, I guess. <laughs> Number two is Tsubame Onsen and So Falls. This is one of those locations that I get a lot of people asking me, like, where is it? What is it? So Falls is a big, beautiful waterfall in the distance of these misty mountains, and Tsubame Onsen is right next to it, and it's this milky, natural, outdoor onsen, and it's just, mwah, you're surrounded by the trees, and there's mist everywhere, usually, because it's a misty area, and it's just lovely. And I think the onsen was free as well. It was just there, like, so good. No, I wasn't free. You have to like donate or something. There'll be a sign out the front. It's great. I've loved it there. To get there from Nagano Station, take the train all the way to Sekiyama Station and then catch a bus from there all the way to the end of the ride at Tsubame Onsen. It takes about 18 minutes, costs 500 yen, and it doesn't run on weekends or public holidays. Again, link in the description. I'm going to stop saying that because there's a link in the description for every place on this list. <laughs> So by now you've probably realized that these locations are quite spread out amongst Japan. So hopefully it can offer some kind of inspiration to you. But if you would like to know 20 of my top favorite hidden gems in Japan between Osaka, Tokyo and Nagano, then you're going to absolutely love my travel guide, brand new called Beyond the Tourist Trail, which is now available on my website. Beyond the Tourist Trail is a travel guide ebook with over 150 pages of 20 top hidden gems with over 100 extra off the beaten track locations. It includes step-by-step -step travel tips, exact location pins, public transport information, and maps presented beautifully in one easy to access PDF. I'm sure you're already aware that some of the top travel destinations in Japan can be so busy. What do you think, Andrew? It's my own personal nightmare. <laughs> it's really frustrating to be herded around like sheep, especially when you've spent so much time and effort planning your trip, which is why I've created the travel guide that I would have loved to have when I first arrived in Japan. I've done all of the research for you, I've laid out every way to get there, created maps and itineraries, and I've even translated entire bus schedules into English so that you don't have to guess anything anymore. There is a bunch of Japanese travel tips as well as Japanese phrases that you should learn before you go, and also even a survival guide for vegans and vegetarians. So while I'm about to give you 10 wonderful places you should visit in Japan, I have still kept all of my absolute favorites in this travel guide instead. So whether it's your second trip or your 10th trip to Japan, I can almost guarantee you that there's going to be places for you to add to your bucket list. So avoid the crowds, support the locals, and get ready for a truly unique experience in Japan with Beyond the Tourist Trail, available now on my website. Thank you so much. I've been spending so much time and effort making this guide, and I think you're going to absolutely love it. Anyway, back to the video. Number three is Nachi Falls and the big beautiful pagoda sitting right in front of it. This place is absolutely beautiful, but it's a little bit off the beaten track, a little bit further away. So it just means that a lot less people go and visit it. It's a really beautiful shrine. There's like a whole thing. There's a tree you can climb inside of. It's a really like cool place and the waterfalls are just Mwah, so pretty, really, really stunning. It's also part of the famous pilgrimage hike, the Kimoto, Kimo, Kim, Kima, Kina, 
What? Kuma, Kumano Kodo. Okay. To get there, take the train to Ki Katsura Station, then a bus bound for Nachisan. Get off at Nachi no Takimae bus stop, which will take about 30 minutes. The next location is actually in my travel guide that I just mentioned, which is Shirakawago. This place is so it's just beautiful. It's it's magical. It's beautiful in every season. It's surrounded by nature. It's got history. It's got everything. I'm in love with this place. <laughs> this place has become famous for its gasha zukuri, which is a thatched roof house, and it just makes for the most beautiful photo. So to get here, catch the train to Takayama Station, and from there, it's a 15 minute bus ride away, costing 2,600 yen one way. Once you're in the town, everything is accessible by walking, so take your time and enjoy the view. The next location is Asokuju National Park. I've been here a couple of times already and I've loved it every time. It's a massive national park with a huge volcano in the center. It's an active volcano, it's constantly spewing out sulfuric gases and there is just so much unique, uh, interesting kind of nature and landscapes here. I have loved it. It last erupted in October of 2021. It was quite spectacular and uh, no one was injured or anything like that. Luckily, uh, they have quite a number of different like sensors and, and uh, what would you call that? Like safety uh, levels in place. And like if it goes past a certain level or if the wind changes direction or something like that, they'll close off that area. They're always constantly monitoring it and updating it. So I always felt safe when I was there. But in saying that, they do frequently close a lot of the time. So it really just depends on the weather. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. To get there, it is definitely going to be easier by car rental. So if you can rent a car, please do it. You can see so much more with that. But if you don't have a car, public transportation is available. From Kumamoto Airport, catch the Kyushu Old bus from the airport to Asakuju area. It only takes 50 minutes to get there, but once you're in the area, you'll need to catch more buses to explore further. There's a number of different viewpoints and different interesting things to see around the whole area, so there'll be buses to catch throughout there. Alternatively, you could catch the train to Aso Station and then a bus to one of the many bus stops in the area, taking only 26 minutes. The next location is Nikko. I have mentioned this place recently in a video because I said that it's better than Hakone, and I stand by that. Nikko is a lovely, slow slightly touristy, but still a little bit authentic uh, town that's very close and very easily accessible from Tokyo. It's beautiful in autumn. It's got a lot of history, but it also has a lot of beautiful nature as well. I highly recommend trying out their famous food, which is called Yuba. Uh, and it's kind of like if you, if you like heat up milk or like soy milk in this case, and uh, this sounds kind of gross, but stay with me. <laughs> you know what, like it gets that like skin on top of milk. If you like take the skin off, and you put it down and then you just like keep taking the skin off it until it's gone and then you, you you've got like multiple layers of skin right of like soy milk skin and then you like roll it up and they chop it and they do all kinds of things with it it tastes a lot better than it sounds uh, <laughs> but yeah it's great and it's vegetarian yeah <laughs> to get to Nikko I would take the Shinkansen to Utsunomiya station and then change here to the JR Nikko line and then get off at Nikko station it will take about 1 hour 40 minutes in total when you're in the town you can catch one of many buses to get around town I would get off at Chuzenjiko Onsen bus stop and from there you can access the waterfalls and the lake within a walking distance the next spot is kind of a combination of three places in Hokkaido and that is Shikaribetsu Igloo Village, uh, Chapel on the Water and Shirogane Blue Pond. Hokkaido is the largest prefecture in Japan. It gets incredibly snowy but also quite beautiful in summer as well. There's so much to see there which is why I narrowed it down to just this small area. Shikaribetsu Igloo Village is this really cool like snow, snow festival built on a frozen lake so it's obviously just in winter. There's like an onsen on on the lake an onsen on a frozen lake which is crazy and like a little like frozen bar that you can go in and drink out of an iced glass i really enjoyed my time here i thought it was very unique and fun chapel on the water is a beautifully designed chapel from uh holding in my excitement from my favorite architect in japan named tadao ando and he does really really beautiful uh usually like concrete hard sharp angled buildings he relies a lot on like light and shadows and this place is just stunning it's usually booked out for weddings a lot of the time so just check ahead of time if you can visit usually in the morning or the evening and it's attached to the hoshino resorts in hokkaido which is a beautiful uh resort chain in japan so there's a lot of things to do in the area. And lastly, Shirogane Blue Pond is a bright blue pond that I think it's that way because of the minerals in the water. And it's just stunning all the time. Absolutely stunning. In winter though, it usually the snow gets so packed that you can't actually see the pond. But like just before winter, 
Beautiful. <laughs> to get to Lake Shikaribetsu, it's not super easy to get there, but if you've got a lot of time, I highly recommend it. Take the train to Ohibiro Station and then the bus to Lake Shikaribetsu, which will take around two hours. There's only four buses a day, so plan ahead. To get to the pond, catch a bus from BA Station to the pond. It will take about 20 minutes. And then to get to the chapel, take a train to Tomamu Station and then a shuttle bus to Hoshino Resort, which will only take five minutes. I have completely forgotten what number we're up to, so the next place is Kurashiki Bikan Historical Quarter. Unfortunately, when I went there, I was there for like a photo job, so I, I don't have any videos of it, but I've got many, many photos. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, this town is beautiful, it's lovely, it's cute, it's charming, it's quaint. Quaint? Quaint. And they have these lovely little canals that you can sit in boats in and ride around the town. It's very historical, there's lots of cafes and shops and and all kinds of things there and it was just lovely. Getting there is very easy, just take a 10 minute walk from the JR Kurashiki station. The next spot is Amami Island or Omami Oshima. This is a small little island that's kind of in between Okinawa and Kyushu, so it's not as far down as Okinawa but it is just as beautiful. I love this place, I especially loved it because it wasn't super touristy, there wasn't very many people around at all, it felt very untouched, but the beaches are lovely. I just really love that kind of like beach island life that isn't very touristy yet. To get there, you have to fly. I think there might be a boat, maybe, but I, I would just fly. It's gonna be a lot, uh, a lot faster and actually a lot cheaper. I think my flights were like $100 return from Tokyo. Public transport is quite limited there, so please, please rent a car if you can. But if you're catching public transport, you can get a bus from the airport to a lot of different areas in Amami. There's about 10 different routes that split and go towards other areas of the island, leaving every 30 minutes or so. And the final location, number 10 on the list, possibly my favorite out of all of them, is called Ochijuku. This is a small little post town, very similar to Shirakawago, but they have the most awesome, coolest, snow festival in winter and I loved it. It was so much fun. They've got little shops set up and there's like mochi everywhere in the trees and there was like games and competitions and then at the end they had this fire festival tradition thing where they ran down the middle in these tiny little shorts with fire and it was it was awesome. I loved it. I really 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 love this area. I haven't been able to see it yet like in any other seasons but it also looks beautiful but I can highly recommend going to the snow festival. I had a great time. This spot is a little bit further away but to get there with public transport, you should make your way to Aizuwakamatsu area and catch the train to Yunokami Onsen Station. From there, catch the bus 20 minutes to Ochijuku. It costs around 2,030 yen one way from Aizuwakamatsu Station. And there we have it, 10 beautiful, wonderful, unique locations in Japan that are not in the Golden Triangle. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I really hope more than anything that you love my travel guide. I have spent so much time on it, perfecting all the tiny details and I think that you're gonna love it. If you like this video, you're gonna love whatever I've got in the guide. Whatever I've got, you're gonna love the guide. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much if you do that. And if not, go and check me out on all of the other socials and do the end of video thing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.